I'm in the Mercure Hotel in Manchester waiting to go into the second meeting of the NICE committee which is going to make the recommendations to local authorities on how to commission dentistry and uh, as you probably know dentistry is being handed over to local authorities in terms of its um, commissioning and so the NICE uh, recommendations are going to have a big impact on what sort of work dentists are doing and what, what sort of work uh, is going to be paid for probably over the next 10 or 20 years. So it came to our attention that uh, this was all being decided by a subcommittee of NICE called PHAC, Public Health something or other, uh, B committee and uh, unfortunately the meetings are being held in Manchester which is a bit of a pain which does mean an overnight stay and uh, an early start. But um, I think they're worthwhile. Unfortunately, nobody else does. I'm the only person here. The public is admitted, which is how we've got in as a sort of quasi member of the public, member of the press. It's a funny committee, though, because they don't, they sort of, they have to admit the public, but they really don't want the public there. They are absolutely typical of all of the sort of this type of committee that I've sat in and or, or watched in that they are they do relish their right to uh, say what they like amongst a group of friends and like-minded individuals without any outside scrutiny or any certainly any outside reporting of what they're saying because in you know the, uh, opening up that sort of um, deliberation to to a, to a wide uh, a much wider scrutiny is very unpopular and um, I've noticed this before when we've been on committees and the committees, for example, when we've started recording them. Um, the reason why we say that we record them is to so that we can sort of, you know, it's, it's easier, obviously, um, than writing everything down. But um, usually it's most helpful when you come to write the minutes because people say they said something and then you can listen back to the tape and you realise that they didn't say that or they wished they'd said it and they didn't say it, or they said uh, quite the opposite and uh, then later wished that they hadn't said that. And uh, So <clears throat> it causes quite a bit of chaos for a meeting to introduce uh, tape recording or uh, any sort of outside, real proper outside scrutiny. The committees tend to vary very much on how they respond to this. Um, some, like the General Dental Council, uh, do admit the public and are reasonably committed to working openly and will allow you to take notes during the meeting and will allow you to, uh, the General Dental Council will allow you to tweet uh, and report live in effect and um, uh, there are no restrictions on what you can report so you know kudos to the GDC for that. NICE is the exact opposite. <laughs> they are Somewhere it says in their rules that they have to admit the public, but they've decided to put every obstacle in the way of anyone uh, reporting anything from the meeting. So when, when we went to the first meeting, they already had a long list of things that we couldn't do, uh, which included uh, quoting people directly, uh, sort of summarising the feeling of the meeting, etc. Um, uh, and we abided by all the rules. Um, but it didn't say that uh, you couldn't report on the meeting live. I think that's because, obviously, um, it's it's an issue that really hasn't ever come up. You know, I mean, the idea that uh, everyone is their own personal uh, broadcasting channel and can broadcast everything live from wherever they are uh, really hadn't occurred to them. Uh, and so we were reporting on the meeting live. Uh, as we have done many other meetings, Westminster Health Forum meetings, General Dental Council meetings, and uh, halfway through the meeting, we were we were pulled up pretty sharply by the chairman, who who read out uh, a notice to the committee, not not to the uh, public gallery or the observers, uh, but it was obviously aimed at us, and basically said, "Stop tweeting what we're doing." <laughs> so uh, so we did. Uh, we did that because we don't want to upset them, you know. I mean, basically, what we we just want them to work in an open and transparent manner and uh, and respect uh, the right of the press to um, free speech, um, whether whether you like what they're saying or not.
but uh, they are pretty well organised nice and one of the ways in which they're organised is that they've managed to rewrite the rules completely between the first meeting we went to and the second one I'm just about to go to. And so uh, whereas laptops were banned before on the grounds that they are, you know, they're disconcerting, they make a, a noise that might distract the committee, which, which ignored completely the fact that their secretary uses a laptop during the meeting and many of the members have laptops and so, you know, that was obviously like a bogus reason for uh, for banning laptops but that was the reason they gave um, and then we were told that uh, uh, if I said can I use a, a tablet to take notes which was was obviously silent they said no laptops includes tablets um, and uh, laptops then it was extended to include mobile phones as well so you could you know so what they've done is they've basically completely rewritten the rules to ban everything so I'm going to go in there in uh, 10 minutes or so with a, a pencil, graphite and papyrus <laughs> and, and make some notes while not being uh, allowed to quote anything that's said, you know, so it's going to be like a general, well there, there are ways around these things, so I think they're being a bit silly. I think we're going to make them look a bit silly, but it's not because we'll be making them look silly, it's because they are making themselves look silly and we will be just explaining what they're doing. So, uh, And, uh, you know, they asked, us after, they asked us for feedback after the last meeting and I told them pretty much what we, the problems that we'd had with it. And, um, again, unlike most committees who will say, yes, thanks very much for your comments, we'll take them on board and either, you know, perhaps do something about them or ignore them. They, they really, uh, I think, took them quite badly and uh, they now see me as a bit of a troublemaker because I complained that we weren't offered a drink of water for the whole day. So that's, they've singled me out as a bit of a troublemaker and a water drinker. So, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's stressful because obviously we, we have a right to be in there and I'm only going to, I'm going to abide by the rules, whatever the rules are, but um, it's all part of this sort of chilling effect on the press that uh, the establishment can exert if it if it tries and I don't see any possible reason why they should be trying to um, do anything other than encourage the press into these meetings really we are we are uh, as interested in policy and reaching the right decision as they are um, unfortunately BDA is not present um, and the, the British Dental Association which in the past obviously always negotiated with the Department of Health and, and reached some sort of compromise where neither side got what they wanted but the, the compromise reached was always reasonably sensible. Um, we've now reverted to a system where the uh, the rules if you like, the framework for dentistry, the model is set by uh, uh, quasi-autonomous uh, quengos like uh, NICE who make recommendations, which, which are only recommendations, but in practice they have the force of law because if you don't follow their recommendations then uh, you're, you're uh, prosecuted as though it was a, effectively a law. And, uh, and so this is where the important stuff is being done and it's not negotiated at all, you know, and it's not really being done by dentists either. I mean there are a few dentists, there's uh, Liz Kay who is, I think I'm allowed to say she's on the committee, I don't think that's a secret. Uh, who is Dean of a Dental School, um, um, but there are other people on there who w have never run a dental surgery, would not know how to run a dental surgery. There's a doctor on there, you know, sort of typical Professor Brainstorm type, retired stroke, semi-retired GP on the grounds that uh, I don't know, I don't know what the grounds are. I mean the grounds are presumably that in, in the general, in the collective consciousness, doctors are sort of superior to dentists, and if there's any decisions uh, to be made about how dentists should work, a, a doctor should be around to, you know, say how it should happen. And there are lots of people that work in public health, and lots and lots and lots of academics, uh, again, who've never really had the uh, problem of implementing in practice what they uh, what they preach in theory. So I'm a little bit worried, but uh, if you carry on, if you follow the reporting, then hopefully we'll be able to let you know where they're going. And then 
uh, if in any way uh, the feedback that we manage to get to them, which will have to be indirect because they're not interested in talking to anyone directly. Um, if, if we help to steer them in the right direction, then so much the better. But uh, I've got to go because I don't want to be a minute late because I've, I just have the feeling that if I'm a minute late, they will um, say, I'm sorry, Mr. Watson, you're a minute late, you can't come in. I've just got a feeling. They're just like that, you know. And uh, having spent the best part of £100 on uh, a train ticket to Birmingham, uh, to Manchester and back for the day and, uh, and the hotel room, luxurious, uh, <coughs> luxurious hotel room, uh, I don't want to waste that money. So I'll... Um, I, I won't be able to report from the meeting, so I can't say anything. I'm going to have to turn everything electronic off, probably take the batteries out, I don't know. And then um, I'll give you a briefing uh, when we're on the way home, and hope it all goes well. Well, that was the weirdest meeting. I uh, managed to stay till the end. Actually, they, um, they do say that they can overrun, but on this occasion they deliberately um, extended the length of the meeting by adding some extra time on the lunch hour, which was a bit strange. So I've had to leave a bit early, and I can't spend too long on the uh, camera because uh, that's my train waiting for me behind there. But uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting meeting because uh, you know, it raises the question of what does a nice committee do if it can't decide on what the question is or uh, what the answer is. In the morning they spend a lot of time um, trying to decide what oral health is and what is uh, an improvement in oral health and what uh, constitutes a disadvantaged group, whether it's a dentally disadvantaged group or a generally disadvantaged group or someone who can access dentistry but the dentistry doesn't last as long as everyone else. Or Then Bayesian in produced all their research and all being academics they all then said the research wasn't any good then in the afternoon they spent just as much time um, asking the other question which is uh, of everything that we know about what's done in dentistry how much of it works and uh, they came up with another big fat zero as to you know of all there are no studies that show anything work in dentistry um, possibly possibly fluoride varnish if you paint it on the teeth of 13 to 16 year olds every month that's about that's the only thing that works everything else fluoridated milk uh, you know possibly supervised toothbrushing but uh, you know it's just uh, there's just such a, a blank there's such a, a complete absence of any um, uh, information as to uh, to help the committee to formulate what they they're going to come up they're going to come up with these recommendations they're going to be based on nothing I'm telling you now nothing they'll be guesswork uh, and if you want any more detail then uh, I'm going to write something for dental fusion the next uh, issue of dental fusion to go into more detail on on where it is likely to go from here because I think you got you need to protect yourself against these sort of people you, you've got a you've got a it's defensive dentistry is the order with these guys you know they're they're lunatics they are lunatics I was um, there, there are rules uh, and you know they completely rewrote the rule book last time I went to ban everything that you know might constitute reporting and um, during there are rules about uh, approaching the committee members um, and uh, which are fair enough you know because they don't want members of the public coming along and lobbying the, the committee members but um, uh, during the lunch hour, I was sitting in the room for observers, and one of the committee members came in, who's, who I know, you know, he's a friend of mine, I've met her before. And uh, she was in there about 20 seconds before somebody came in and told her that she wasn't allowed to talk to me. And this was a personal conversation, we weren't discussing anything that the committee was doing or anything. Uh, and uh, she was hustled out and uh, told in no uncertain terms not to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> that she wasn't, you know, that the conversation had to come to an end. So every time they do something astounding, every time they do something, I, mean, I, I don't have the words to describe how badly run this committee is. And even if I could find the words and I told them, they wouldn't understand what I was saying. They wouldn't understand what they'd done wrong. They wouldn't understand why I felt aggrieved or embarrassed about their behavior. They wouldn't know. 
they, they, they even give them some time to think about it. They wouldn't understand. So um, we'll have to try and put some pressure on them indirectly. Okay, so that's it from uh, uh, from Manchester, which has been sunny and and then rainy and then sunny. Uh, I've got another. I've got a four-hour trip home now. So uh, uh, I'll talk to you uh, perhaps when I get back.